China's bad debt ratio soars, hundreds of banks become ticking time bombs. Xi's message to U.S. business leaders after 1.5-hour talk, Insider revealed. Beijing tightens belts, analysts say government coffers empty, resorting to extorting from the people. Dog drives to pick up owner from school, turns heads everywhere. It's all covered in today's China Truths. China's bad debt ratio soars, hundreds of banks become ticking time bombs. As China's economy deteriorates, the country's banking sector faces a growing crisis, with reports indicating that bad debts have surged in hundreds of banks, creating a ticking time bomb that could have unimaginable consequences if it were to explode. A prime example of this troubling trend is Zhejiang Bank, located in Jiangxi province. The bank recently released a performance forecast predicting a 30% decrease in net profit for 2023 compared to the previous year. Chinese media reports reveal that Zhejiang Bank's non-performing loan ratio has been rising for two consecutive years, exceeding 2% in the third quarter of last year, while its provision coverage ratio has been declining. According to data from Enterprise Warning, as of September 2022, the bank's non-performing loan balance stood at 6.868 billion yuan, approximately 966.5 million US dollars, with a non-performing loan ratio of 2.27% and a provision coverage ratio of 133.63%. The Economist reported that Zhejiang Bank's disclosure of its expected profit drop due to poor loan performance is an unusual move, as mainland banks typically avoid revealing such information. The report also sheds light on the practice of banks controlled by the Chinese Communist Party lending to asset management companies AMCs, to address their non-performing loan issues. However, the confidentiality clauses in these transactions prevent the public and even the courts from accessing the details, allowing banks to conceal the true extent of their bad debt problems. Experts from the National University of Singapore Business School and Renmin University of China warned that these problem loans will continue to accumulate, posing a significant threat to hundreds of Chinese banks. Zhejiang Bank's bad debts, for instance, have increased sevenfold between 2015 and the end of 2022. The rise in non-performing loans is not limited to Zhejiang Bank. In December 2022, China Citic Bank and the Agricultural Bank of China were fined 220 million yuan, about 33.84 million US dollars, based on the current exchange rate, and 27 million yuan, about 4.2 million US dollars, respectively, for mismanagement of bad debts. This increase in non-performing loans is weakening the balance sheets of financial institutions, making it more difficult for the CCP government to provide direct fiscal support to favored industries. To address the bad debt problem, the CCP established four centrally controlled AMCs decades ago. In 2016, these state-owned AMCs purchased nearly 1 trillion yuan, about 157 billion US dollars, based on the current exchange rate, of bad debts out of a total of 1.5 trillion yuan in non-performing loans, about 226 billion US dollars. However, by 2022, they only acquired less than 50 billion yuan of bad debts, $7.8 billion USD, based on the current exchange rate, while the scale of non-performing loans surged to nearly 3 trillion yuan, approximately 470 billion US dollars. The planned merger of three AMCs with the CCP's Sovereign Wealth Fund, as reported by state media in January 2023, underscores the financial difficulties faced by these institutions and portends more bad news for Zhejiang Bank and hundreds of other banks facing similar difficulties. Xi's message to U.S. business leaders after 1.5-hour talk, Insider revealed. After Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping's high-profile meeting with American business leaders in Beijing, an anonymous U.S. company CEO revealed details about the meeting. CNBC writer Michelle Caruso Cabrera disclosed on social media that she had just spoken with an executive who attended the China Development Forum CDF, and met with Xi. The executive stated that the business environment in China remains very poor, and confidence in the Chinese economy is low. 
The executive mentioned that the meeting with Xi Jinping lasted approximately an hour and a half, during which entrepreneurs posed pointed questions to Xi, who responded forcefully. According to the executive, Xi Jinping emphasized 10 key points, including The Chinese economy has not yet reached its peak, every country faces its own challenges, and China has the capability to overcome its difficulties, Xi repeatedly asserted that he knows how to revive the economy, the Beijing government is aware of the need to create 10 million jobs annually for graduates, it is wrong for the U.S. to hinder China's economic development through semiconductor sanctions. China does not pose a threat to the U.S., Taiwan is a red line, nuclear war would lead to the destruction of humanity, and we should avoid reaching that point, the Thucydides trap is not inevitable, and we should spare no effort to avoid it, China's political system will remain unchanged. The executive spent nearly a week in China, engaging in discussions with Chinese leaders and business people. His assessment is that there are no indications of China abandoning the party's centralized control over the economy. Wealthy Chinese individuals are panicking and aggressively selling off assets such as private jets and high-end properties, because having wealth in China is perilous, and these affluent individuals are also attempting to transfer their wealth abroad. It appears that Xi Jinping's meticulously planned meeting did not achieve the intended outcome. His aim to retain foreign companies and influence the U.S. election through the business community may have been unsuccessful. Commentator Jiang Xinjia believes that as the economy worsens and the Chinese communist government's financial resources dwindle, Xi Jinping's ruling power weakens. Recently, there have been three signals indicating that she has begun to experience a decline in power. First, Xi Jinping has not convened the third plenary session of the 20th Central Committee. The Chinese Communist Party enjoys holding meetings and uses large gatherings as a symbol of strong power. For instance, Mao Zedong convened the 10th National Congress of the Communist Party of China in 1974 and the 4th National People's Congress in 1975. At that time, Mao's health was already very frail, but he wanted to demonstrate that he was still in control by holding national and party-wide meetings. Otherwise, people would perceive Mao's health as poor and his power as unstable. Xi is also aware of this, so his decision not to hold the third plenary session is not due to excessive willfulness. Jiang Xinjia believes that Xi must have encountered significant difficulties, with the most likely issue being Ping Liyuan's entry into the Politburo. Second, Xi Jinping has transferred his position as director of the Central Cyberspace Affairs Commission to Kai Chi. Xi Jinping handing over such a crucial role to Kai Chi may be due to physical issues that prevent him from managing so many responsibilities. Jiang Xinjia believes that the third manifestation of Xi Jinping's declining power is in foreign affairs. On Thursday, the UN Security Council discussed extending the term of the expert panel on sanctions against North Korea. Russia vetoed the proposal, and China abstained, indicating that Beijing is taking a step back in sanctioning North Korea to appease the United States. Jiang Xinjia stated that during his peak of power, Xi Jinping had been courting North Korea to confront the United States together. Now that his power is waning and he is increasingly unable to compete with the United States, he has begun to placate the United States to maintain his own power. Beijing tightens belts, analysts say government coffers empty, resorting to extorting from the people. The Chinese Communist Party has recently implemented a nationwide campaign to promote financial discipline and frugality across all levels of government. In detail, the Ministry of Finance issued a notice on their website, urging all regions and departments to tighten their belts and maintain strict financial discipline. The notice outlined several key areas where spending should be controlled, including Strengthening the management of three public expenses, official receptions, vehicles, and overseas trips Reducing general expenditures and significantly cutting back on forums, festivals, exhibitions, and other activities Reinforcing budget constraints, execution supervision, and performance management Strictly managing expenditures and enforcing financial discipline. 
In response to the central government's directive, provincial-level government affairs management bureaus in various regions, such as Inner Mongolia, Hunan, and Beijing, have introduced specific measures and plans to implement these belt-tightening policies. These measures include Maintaining office buildings only to ensure safety and basic needs. Reducing maintenance expenses for provincial-level office buildings by 40% in 2024. Updating official vehicles only if they have been in use for more than 8 years and have driven more than 250,000 kilometers. Maximizing the use of public warehouses to fill gaps and coordinate resources, with the goal of increasing asset allocation by more than 50% year-on-year. Repairing and reusing office equipment whenever possible and sourcing equipment from public warehouses. Even at the local level, belt-tightening measures are being enforced. In Guangdong province, a notice was issued requiring all street-level party and government organs, public institutions, and communities to practice frugality in their daily operations. Specific measures include eliminating the provision of bottled water at meetings, encouraging attendees to bring their own water cups, and providing water dispensers in meeting rooms without offering disposable cups. These belt-tightening policies across various regions in China reflect the Chinese Communist Party's efforts to promote frugality, reduce waste, and maintain strict financial discipline in the face of economic challenges. However, despite the CCP singing a song of belt-tightening, experts suggest that the measures may be more of a show for the public, similar to its selective anti-corruption campaigns, which are often used to eliminate dissent and serve political needs rather than genuinely address the issue. They argue that unless the CCP resolves its main money-spending system, blindly saving on trivial matters will be useless. Moreover, Lu Xiaochen, a former deputy director of a forestry bureau in Hunan province, believes that local governments will not genuinely follow the central government's call for belt tightening. He suggests that the CCP needs to maintain the loyalty of its bureaucratic class and fears that truly making cadres live frugally could lead to them lying flat and not serving or maintaining the regime. The CCP is really out of money, will plunder people. Amid recent fiscal challenges, local government funds across various regions have tightened, triggering a series of pay cuts. Insiders from various regions have revealed the extent of these financial woes to Epic Times reporters. In Guangdong, for example, year-end bonuses have been eliminated, and the mere ability to pay monthly salaries on time is now considered a notable achievement. Furthermore, subsidies intended for businesses are being withheld due to a lack of funds in the public treasury. A source stated, at present, we can only guarantee the most basic aspects, such as the timely payment of monthly wages. Anything beyond that is simply not feasible. The central government has also taken steps to curb spending, with the former finance minister, Liu Kuen, announcing during the 2022 sessions that non-essential and non-mandatory expenditures had been reduced by more than 50 percent. The government has committed to securing only essential expenses, such as salaries. Moreover, the past year has seen a significant reduction in the personal accounts of employee health insurance funds. In Shandong, a retired government employee reported that as of February 2023, medical insurance reforms have further reduced personal account allocations. Those under 70 years old now receive only 100 yuan, about 13 US dollars and 84 cents, per month, while those over 70 receive 125 yuan, about 17 US dollars and 30 cents. Although outpatient expenses are reimbursable, there is a threshold, expenses below 500 yuan, about 69 US dollars and 19 cents, per year are not covered, and only 65% of costs exceeding that amount are reimbursed. The public has expressed concern over these developments, with many noting that the call for frugality began four years ago and has only intensified since then. Some netizens suggest that those relying on government funds should be grateful if they can maintain their jobs and experience minimal income reduction. The sentiment that the government has truly run out of funds is palpable, with one user commenting, when the tightening starts in earnest, the lower echelons should brace for hardship. Another lamented, after years of reform and opening up, we find ourselves back in a situation where we must scrimp and save.
Institutional reforms within the government system have also led to downsizing, with a growing preference for hiring the least costly option among civil servants, public institution staff, enterprise employees, and temporary workers. As China navigates these financial challenges, it is evident that the repercussions will be felt across all levels of society. The government's belt-tightening measures may lead to increased taxation or the appropriation of private wealth to bolster its finances, potentially exacerbating economic hardship for citizens and businesses alike. Ultimately, these fiscal woes could contribute to heightened social unrest and political instability in the country. Dog drives to pick up owner from school, turns heads everywhere. After a series of somber reports on China's economic downturn and its impact on citizens' lives, we conclude today's news with a heartwarming story from Xingtai, Hebei province. On March 26, a video captured a little girl emerging from her kindergarten and climbing into a wooden cart pulled by her faithful Labrador retriever. The adorable duo turned heads and melted hearts as they made their way home, with the girl's radiant smile testament to the joy and comfort she found in her canine companion's presence. The girl's father assured that the activity is safe, with parents always supervising, and mentioned that sometimes the girl walks alongside the dog to avoid tiring it out. As the video gained traction online, netizens expressed delight, jokingly referring to the cart as the Rolls Royce of the child world and reminiscing about their own childhood dreams of having a loyal canine escort. Some parents humorously warned against showing the video to their own children, fearing that they would insist on having a similar arrangement with a pet dog. Let us know your thoughts on today's topic by leaving a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend, it inspires us to continue creating more quality and reliable content. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting insights from China Truths. Thanks for tuning in.